Call her Gaia, Earth, Terra, whatever you want. Our planet is a living, evolving being, just like a human being. And just like a human being, a planet evolves in phases of seven, meaning the Earth has seven distinct stages of life or seven different incarnations. Each incarnation is in a slightly different density and the consciousness and environment of the planet shifts or evolves as it moves through each stage. Humanity evolves with the planet and is the human embodiment of her forces. The seven stages of a planet's growth are called epochs. Each epoch builds upon the last and also introduces something new. This is how the planet and humanity evolve. Epoch after epoch after epoch, the planet and the human being go through a process of divine metamorphosis. Humanity is challenged to perceive and discern the lesson of the epoch and change along with the planet, making epochs also a form of spiritual initiation. The ability to take on the challenge of an epoch and transform oneself is to evolve with the life wave of the planet. The inability to perceive the task of an epoch correctly means falling away from the life wave of the Earth. In Theosophy, a planet's evolution over a long period of time is called the life wave. The life wave not only includes the evolution and metamorphosis of a planet, but also the human beings evolving on that planet. The goal when incarnating on a planet is to evolve with it, to move within the life wave. Our body, our form, is the Earth. All of the forces that our body is made of is drawn and made from the elements of the Earth and is in union with it or part of the Earth's expression. Thus, we cannot separate our form from the Earth and evolve. To make changes to our form and physicality or to abandon the Earth is to forfeit our place in the life wave and to fail the initiation of our time, of our epoch. The seven planetary epochs of our Earth are the Polarian, the Hyperborean, the Lemurian, the Atlantean, and our current post-Atlantean epoch. There are also two future epochs. The first three epochs were centered around the materialization or the creation of our physical bodies and the materialization of the earth. The last three epochs focus around the spiritualizing of that form or of the body back into the astral plane or the ascension of ourselves out of matter and off of the wheel of material reincarnation. The middle point of development is the turning point where the I or the individual soul or holy individuality is introduced. Humanity is not alone in this evolutionary journey. They are in fact part of the spiritual hierarchy or the angelic hierarchy. They are the most material form of the hierarchy, and if humanity is to evolve with a life wave of the earth to its completion, humanity will ascend to become the official tenth angel in the hierarchy of angels. To do this is not simply about spiritual forces alone. We must be good custodians of our form of our body. We must see the human template, the human form, as perfect as it is and understand that it is our task now to spiritualize the form. We must also recognize that changing our form through transhumanism or genetic manipulation is a form of spiritual materialism that will potentially separate oneself from the life wave of the earth and the angelic hierarchy. Let's explore the Polarian Epoch. The Polarian Epoch is the first epoch of our planet as we know it. In this early stage, humanity was just beginning to materialize, and the Earth and humanity were all joined in one large etheric mass, a kind of living ether. There was no individuation, and all kingdoms of life, mineral, plant, and animal, and human were one, each existing as a potential. The spiritual hierarchies were present in a higher plane and beaming their consciousness downwards into what would become our material plane. 
You could see it as the holy divine beings of the spiritual hierarchies radiating themselves downwards into this developing level of reality. The result of this beaming downward of the spiritual hierarchies was the first stirring of life in this plane of reality. You have probably heard of astral projection or lucid dreaming. Well, this is a good way in which we can understand the early epochs of human beings and the planet. During astral projection, the astral body leaves the physical body to move about the astral plane. Connected by a silver cord, the individual is free to go deeply into the depths of the astral world and not lose connection with its physical body. The student who learns astral projection can have incredible spiritual experiences, gain knowledge and heal. Just like we can project upwards into the astral, these spiritual beings, these angels, projected downwards into the material, creating this plane of reality with their mind. The angels of the spiritual hierarchy were dreaming this material realm into existence, and over time, they would enter into that dream. The dream would become more and more solid over time, and each hierarchy of angel gives something to the dream in order for it to evolve. The seraphim, cherubim, and thrones gave the foundational forces of love, harmony, and will. The second grouping, the dominions, virtues, and powers, gave wisdom and the capacity for movement and form. Finally, the archai, archangels, and angels work more directly on planets and human beings. Thus, we are living within the minds of great spiritual beings who sacrifice their own essence for this reality to exist, for us to exist. And though it is hard to comprehend, they are us and we are them. This principle of entering the dream or of humanity living in God's mind or within the angelic hierarchy's mind is clear in some myths and stories. In Alice in Wonderland, Alice realizes that she is actually living in the dream of the Red King, and if one day he were to wake up, she would no longer exist, that the world would no longer exist. This cosmic principle of entering the dream is also the premise of the movie The Matrix. In this film, this phenomenon takes on a more sinister tone, showing the shadow or divergent expression of this principle in our modern times. Neo realizes he is within his own dream, and his real body is unconscious and in a Borg-like existence where his energy is being harvested. The Earth during the Polarian Epoch was just taking form and was manifested slowly from the downwardly projecting minds of the angelic hierarchies, or the spiritual hierarchies. Thus, in this early stage, the Earth and humanity were more like a nebulous blob. In the later stage of this epoch, certain outlines of what would be human forms began to congeal, and the first forms were more like an oval or an egg shape. These egg shaped forms could sense sound vibrations. Life was centered around what we would recognize today as the North Pole of the planet but the Polarian Epoch is best understood as divine potential or the divine seed, the beginning. This earlier Polarian phase of life for the Earth and humanity was explained by Rudolf Steiner as a kind of germ phase, saying, at the period discussed here, we are dealing with a kind of Earth germ. This contained within itself the forces which led to the Earth of today. These forces were acquired through earlier conditions. This earth germ, however, must not be imagined as a densely material one like that of a plant. It was rather of a soul character. It consisted of that delicate, malleable, mobile substance which is called astral in occult literature. In this astral germ of the earth, there are only human rudiments at first. These are the rudiments of the later human souls. 
In anthroposophy, the Earth in the Polarian Epoch is made up of astral and etheric matter. Forms are beginning to take shape as soul essences shape the ether with their minds. It is a sphere which in turn is composed of innumerable small ether spheres, the ether men, and is surrounded by an astral envelope just as the present Earth is surrounded by an envelope of air. It is in this astral envelope or atmosphere that the astral men live and whence they act upon their ether likenesses. The astral human souls create organs in their ether likenesses and produce a human ether life in them. Within the whole earth there exists only one condition of matter, the refined living ether. In theosophical books, this first humanity is called the Polarian Root Race. Rudolf Steiner also points out that in the Polarian Epoch of the Earth, the Earth can be seen purely as a conglomerate of souls, and all kingdoms of life, mineral, plant, and animal, were existing within these early human souls, this early conglomerate of human souls that was forming the early planetary sphere. He says, Everything in preceding conditions which was already present as a mineral, plant, or animal nature has been drawn into these human rudiments and become fused with them. Before man enters upon the earth, he is a soul, an astral entity. As such, he appears on earth. The astral human beings combine with this ether. They impress their nature upon this ether in order that it may become a likeness of the astral human entity. In this initial condition, we are dealing with an ether earth, which really consists only of these ether men, which is only a conglomerate of them. Before the anthroposophical teachings, the Plarian Epoch was described by Helena Blavatsky in her work, The Secret Doctrine. She stated that the Polarian human being was initially formed from the template of higher angelic beings. These higher beings emanated their forces into the developing etheric mass on this plane. This means that the primordial human being can best be described as a direct emanation or embodiment of these higher angelic beings. This first principle of creation through downwards emanation and the materialization of the higher hierarchies is key, as in future stages of human development, this emanation of the hierarchies continues to be the only impulse for human and planetary evolution. No matter how complex we become, this principle of evolution through divine materialization never changes. In theosophy, and early classical esoteric writing, the evolution of the human being and planet is portrayed as the progression of something called root races. As the human body and planet are unified, the evolution of the planet can be seen in the qualities of the human being. However, the word race in early esoteric writings is not the same concept of race we have today. The concept of a race, or a root race today, is primarily describing a kind of consciousness, not a kind of body or the color of a body. In earlier phases of humanity, this term did apply to our physical forms. However, in our current post-Atlantean epoch, human evolution is drawn inward and this concept no longer applies to races of people and is best understood as a quality of consciousness that any human being of any kind on the planet has the capacity to take on. Manly P. Hall also describes the Polarians when he said, The first root race existed while the Earth was still part of the nebula of the Sun. They were loosely organized forms of baggy and senseless shapes. They had very little consciousness but were connected by magnetic cords to the higher spiritual side of their own natures, and also with guardian intelligences. 
They were not subject to mortality, but lived forever. They lived in the fire element exuded from the sun. They developed vaguely the sense of hearing. Those are the sons of yoga. At first, there was no reproduction, but later reproduction was accomplished by fission. The third eye was active as the pole of the magnetic cord. These are called the Polarian species. In closing, the Polarian Epoch has been spoken about by many classical teachers, from Rudolf Steiner's Anthroposophy and Madame Blavatsky's Theosophy to Manly P. Hall. All of these teachers took the time to portray the most formative level of our Earth's development, as this level represents a very deep level of our own consciousness. The main themes of the Polarian Epoch are that there was no individuation. All life, from the micro to the macro, was unified in one living astral or ether ball. This is often compared to a nebula. Even what would be our great sun and all of the planets that we see today were at one time united with the Earth and not defined at all. They weren't individuated. All kingdoms of life, mineral, plant, animal, and human were also united as one, as a pure astral etheric mass of potential, just waiting to be warmed by a sun, the sun. There were soul essences on the planet at this time, and they took on a rather nebulous shape. The only sense in this early stage was hearing or sound. This is parallel to the idea in Genesis where John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Thank you everyone for watching. Please don't forget to keep these teachings going by giving this video a like, comment, and share. If you want to go deeper, I work more directly with students on my website, where I also accept donations. Thank you.